I want to start here. I want to start from Zechariah. Uh, the title of the message today is Birthing Kingdom Strategies. Uh, last time we were with you, we talked about a kingdom mindset, and that was just an appetizer for what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the strategy. If you have a kingdom mindset, when when you face difficult situations, uh, you will uh, find what God wants you to do. You'll look at things from God's perspective and come up with creative strategies. And we're going to start with a, a story that I'll just tell you uh, briefly from the book of Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah 1, and uh, uh, Zechariah saw a vision, and, and uh, he saw these nations coming against uh, Judah and uh, the kingdom of Judah. So he had all of these uh, mighty nations, powers, uh, also there in the uh, in the uh, Zechariah one that talk, calls them horns, but it's actually those powers of those nations coming against uh, the kingdom of God. And so, what do you do when you have a kingdom and you? you want to come up with something to protect uh, to the kingdom. And so we're going to see how God applies kingdom strategies uh, to save the kingdom. And so I want to share just to read this one verse from the Amplified, uh, but we're going to see in here uh, all of these uh, nations coming against Judah, the God's kingdom, and then what God raises up uh, to overcome all of those powers. So read this one verse, and then I'll explain it. Okay. What are these horns or craftsmen coming to do? And he said, these are the horns or the powers that have scattered Judah so that no man raised up his head because of the suffering inflicted by the Gentile nations. But these craftsmen have come to terrify them and make them panic and throw down the horns of the nations who have lifted up their horns against the land of Judah in order to scatter it. Okay. What this is saying is, hey, there's all of these forces coming against the kingdom, and God is raising up four craftsmen or artisans, creative mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And he's, mm -hmm. he's going to save the whole kingdom with four creative people. Wow. He's going to come up with a creative strategy. Mm, That's mm, what we're mm. calling a kingdom mindset. We're talking about okay. tonight birthing a kingdom strategy. So if you have oh, that kingdom hallelujah. mindset, you're going to come up with a kingdom strategy that will terrify, <laughs> terrify Ooh, the enemy and uh, cause the enemy to flee in panic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, there's a good uh, biblical basis for what we're talking about here. And, and he didn't do it with might. See, we think about, okay, there's a, a 10,000 soldiers are come, coming against us, so let's raise up an army and we'll have 10,000 or 12,000 or 15,000. We'll go out. That's natural against natural. Uh, but we're talking about kingdom here. But one, what is the kingdom? It's spiritual. Uh, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's spiritual. So you come up with creative yeah. strategies mm. to overcome the enemy. Amen. Now, Amen. the basic idea uh, in this message today is that things change. And a oh, lot of people yeah. get comfortable uh, in the way things are happening and, and going along and everything's good and, and they're not expecting anything to change. And that's when they get disappointed and that's when they get discouraged when things change and, and come against them and they have to come up with a new decision, a new uh, strategy on what to do. And so as long as everything is going along smooth, your minds, uh, the your mindset doesn't really matter that much. If things are going good, you, if you're making the right decisions, you just keep on doing the same thing. But it's interesting, God promises change. Mm -hmm. Things are going to change. You know, even in Genesis, 
uh, he said, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have heat, and then it's going to be followed by cold, and then cold, it's going to be followed by heat, and the day is going to be followed by night, and the night's going to be followed by day. As long as the earth remains, things are mm -hmm. going to change. Mm -hmm. I want us to look at, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Ecclesiastes, and look how many things are going to change. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every matter under the heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up is lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. Oh, wow. A time for war uh -oh. and a time for peace. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Things are going to change. If things are going good, they're, they're other things are going to happen. If things are going bad, wait it out. It's going to get better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things are going to change. Uh, where's all this change coming from? Well, Daniel 2, uh, the second chapter tells us what happens. Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes the times and the seasons. Who's changing things? God's changing things. Don't get comfortable where you are. You'll be disappointed if you think things don't change. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. I, I, uh, when I was working, I was preparing to to uh, uh, retire, and so I made some decisions uh, ten years before I retired to to put me on a pathway so I could retire at a certain age. And when that time came, uh, uh, it happened uh, just as I had planned by the Holy Spirit, and I was able to retire uh, with a comfortable retirement. But there was a bubble that burst, a bubble burst. Mm -hmm. the, during stock that time, market. The, the stock market uh, prices fell, the housing uh, uh, prices uh, fell. And, and so things changed. See, if there's a bubble, it's going to burst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, things are going to change. And we need to be prepared for that. And a lot of my coworkers uh, weren't able to retire for s until several years later. Mm -hmm. And so we need to have the Holy Spirit giving us strategies. Mm, hallelujah. Because things are going to change and we need to have the strategies that will work. See, when we have changes, a lot of times it brings a crisis. And so I want to think about a crisis. What is a crisis? Well, it's a hard time. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult, it's a difficult time. And, and we have to, in a crisis, uh, we have to make decisions that were unscheduled. And we have to make plans that we hadn't counted on. We have to make some changes. So we have to make, in the crisis, in a crisis situation, uh, things get tough. And we have to come up with new solutions, new decisions. And, and that's what where the kingdom mindset comes in. That's where the kingdom mindset that we can come up with creative solutions and uh, overcome the crisis. Things are going to change. We need to get ready for them. Things are going to change. If there's a bubble, it's going to burst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If prices are high, they're going to come down. If mm -hmm. prices are low, they're going to go up. We just need to know when. And the, it's only mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit comes, he'll show you things to come. And so we need to it's be... the timing of the Lord. We need to know the timing of the Lord. And, and when these difficult situations come up, we need to look inside of us. Look for that craftsman, that artisan that uh, creative person, that create, mm -hmm. look for creative strategies because what? God is transforming you into the image of Christ. Amen. And let me tell you, you don't 
change much. You're not transformed much in the good times. You're transformed into the image of Jesus Christ in the bad times. Woo! Hallelujah! See, if I had never faced a crisis, Woo! I, I, I was on a pathway, and, and I, it, that pathway would have led me to destruction. But when I faced crisis, I turned to the Lord. I changed where I was headed, and I said, oh, I, I've got to put my trust in the Lord, because only the Lord mm -hmm. has the solution for this crisis Amen. that I'm facing. Amen. And, uh, of course, I've, I've said it before that uh, we've, a couple of life and death uh, situations that we faced changed our lives Amen. completely. Amen. And the first one was when our daughter uh, was uh, right after she was born. They told her she told us she was going to die. Well, the, if the doctors say she's going to die, our first alternative was to say, okay, let's go see another doctor. Mm -hmm. But that doctor said she's going to die. And we took her to lots of doctors. And so we had to make some changes. The only solution was the Lord. Amen. We had to turn to the Lord. And that put me on a different pathway. I know I was on a pathway that would lead to destruction, but I, I changed and it was the decisions I made in the face of crisis. I mean, See, you don't have to make the hard choices in the good times. The good times are just keep on rolling, but they don't keep on rolling. They, they stop and, and all of a sudden you hit a, a brick wall or, or you hit an, uh, something that's going to attack you and overcome you, bring death and life. Uh, you don't want to die without fulfilling your purpose, without fulfilling Amen. your destiny. Amen. And it was the crisis in my life. And not only uh, did the doctor say that our daughter was going to die, but they also said uh, later on that my wife was going to die. I gave her six months to live. And that was in 1992, uh, December the 30th, mm -hmm. 1992. Now, At 4 p.m. That, that date uh, is uh, forever oh, etched, yeah. Oh, yeah. etched in us, in our thinking. But when you face decisions like that, crises like that, and you've got to turn to the Lord, there's no other way. And that's what you do with kingdom strategy because you've got a kingdom mindset. Well, you know, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, the famous evangelist, said that out of great trials comes great <clears throat> faith. Out of great trials comes great faith. See, if you have if you turn to the Lord, <laughs> if you haven't faced crisis in your life, my, things are good. And I hope things just go on good for you. But you've got to be prepared. There are changes promised. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. You know, God doesn't change and his promises don't change. But he promised change. We saw it right there yeah. in Ecclesiastes. Yeah. And he, uh, or Daniel said, it was the Lord bringing changes. Things, mm -hmm. things are going to change. And we need to be uh, prepared for that. And it's with the kingdom mindset. See, uh, I, I talked last time about when we uh, submit to the Lord and we put our body as a living sacrifice on his altar, then we can renew his mind. Well, a lot of people do renew that. Renew our mind. <laughs> renew, the, renew our mind. But what I said, we seek first the kingdom of God. And so we renew it to the kingdom. So a lot of people are renewing it to a lot of different things, but it's no focus. But the kingdom, see, it's the kingdom that we're to seek. And so when we renew our mind to a kingdom mindset, and we have a kingdom mindset, then when the crisis comes, we have something we can fall back on, we can rely on, because we are seeking mm -hmm. the kingdom and mm -hmm. the kingdom first. Amen. It's Amen. really important for us to seek the kingdom first. Uh, and and then, you know, the word crisis in Chinese has two uh, characters uh, that, re that represent it, and they are danger and opportunity. That's what a crisis is. Mm -hmm. uh, danger and opportunity. So there, <laughs> there are things that are difficulty, and uh, they may even uh, want to destroy you but it's an opportunity for you to change, to be transformed into the image of Christ. Now, see, if you face a crisis and you don't change and you don't respond to that and make some decisions to trust the Lord and to, and to move into his presence and rely on him, 
then you didn't pass that test and, and you're going to go around again and mm -hmm. you're going to face the mm -hmm. same test maybe six months later or maybe a year later but you'll face the same test what are you going to do this time when you face that crisis and that test well we're just going to or depend on a, a arm of the flesh. If we mm. depend on the arm of the flesh, wow. see, we wow. don't we don't pass the test, oh, and, and so we goodness. go we go around again. We're going to keep keep uh, encountering the same test uh, time mm -hmm. after time again until we pass the test. The mm -hmm. test is we're going to rely on the Lord. Ooh, we're going to put hallelujah. our trust in the Lord. I want to say that our worst enemy is the devil. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, and then, uh, everything else uh, is just uh, going to be a part of his trying to attack you because he comes to steal, kill, well, and, and destroy. destroy. So let's see here in First Peter 5, 8 about says, our devil, the adversary. Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Okay, that's your worst enemy. And, and a lot of times you may not see him and he, he doesn't come with horns and a, a pitchfork and a tail, but he, a lot of times he works through enemies. He, I mean, through people or he works through situations. Uh, he stares things up. He, mm -hmm. he, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. But here's Jesus and he's showing the solution to overcome the devil. And this is Roman, uh, Matthew 12, 28. But if I cast out the demons by the spirit of God, then listen to this, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Ooh, so Jesus was just applying the kingdom of God to cast out the demons to overcome. You can overcome the devils uh, by Hallelujah. Mm. Applying the kingdom mindset to develop a kingdom strategy like those four craftsmen or the four artesian mm -hmm. artisans, artisans that would uh, create, come up with creative solutions to keep the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Keep it moving forward. Not let the uh, powerful nations and the enemy nations of the world come against it, but keep the kingdom strong and keep it advancing. Mm, now, hallelujah. <clears throat> the same thing is in uh, Matthew 10. Uh, Jesus gave his disciples uh, authority mm -hmm. uh, to cast out demons and to heal the, the sick. sick. Amen. And so here's the strategy in Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. And I'll ask Sherry to read those. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to find things. Up. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. Freely you have received freely give this is the kingdom strategy proclaim the mm -hmm. kingdom tell mm -hmm. talk about the kingdom tell about the kingdom and, and then demonstrate the kingdom and i believe i have do i have this also in the passion translation same oh, same verse yes, you do. Mm -hmm. there's a few phrases here i'd mm -hmm. like for you to pick up on okay it starts out with continually 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 bring healing to the lepers and to those who are sick Continually, not just every once in a while. Yeah. And make it your habit. Oh, oh I it love is. that. Make, make it, it your habit to break off the demonic presence from people and raise the dead back to life. Freely you have received the power of the kingdom. Wow. So freely release it to others. So what have you received? Oh, you received wow. the power of the kingdom. kingdom. You freely receive it. Oh, so freely, freely release. release it. How do you freely release it? Mm. You continually heal. You, you make Hallelujah. a habit of, of casting out demons. Hallelujah. Bring down to men, uh, demonic, demonic forces. forces. Hallelujah. Make a habit of mm. that. Mm. You, mm. you know, that's what Sherry and I try to do. We yeah. try Amen. to be healing people and praying for people and bringing forth healing and and uh, casting out demons uh, just constantly. And that's, that's what happened the last, uh, uh, let's say, 10 days. It's just uh, over and over again. I'll just ask Sherry to 
give some of the highlights of the things that we've seen the Lord do in just the last few days. Um, we we were in a, a meeting, and uh, now I have seen the Lord uh, lengthen legs and lengthen arms, and and it has been wonderful. Uh, but this uh, young woman comes up to me, and she had been hurt when she was a child, and so her left arm did not grow. And so she had a, a, a small arm, and it was half the length of her other arm. And I looked at it, and I said, oh, uh, dear Lord. And uh, I said, if you, you can do uh, the little, you can do the big. And so... <laughs> Uh, so we, you know, put those arms, to, you know, together as much as she could, because this arm over here was way back here and the Lord stretched it right out. Hallelujah. The Lord stretched it Hallelujah. right out. And she said, oh, my arm feels strange. My arm feels strange. And that was because she had been used to having that short little arm and, uh, and her other one be the regular size. And so I give the Lord praise for that. Amen. Uh, and then we were at, um, uh, staying uh, out of town uh, for a day or two and, and to help celebrate uh, Freddie's father's day. And we get ready to leave and the man is putting the suitcases in the, the, uh, the back of our car. And I started to get into the car and then I said, no, He's in pain. And so I went around to the to the back of the car and I didn't ask him if I could pray. And I just, I put my hand right there in the middle of his back on his left side and I began to pray. And he spoke and he said, I've been up all night long in pain right there where you just put your hand. Hallelujah. Well, now the kingdom has come. Amen. The kingdom came. Amen. And touched his back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give all the praise to the Lord. You know, Amen. That that verse in uh the Passion Translation said continually be healing people. Right. Continually make a habit of, of casting out the demons and bringing down demonic forces. That that's what we do. You know the Lord uh I'd say maybe ten days ago the Lord uh healed me I, I was having some pain mm. in my knee and in my uh, back and uh, as I I do a lot of walking I walk in the woods a lot and sometimes the grounds uh, uneven. Uh, uneven and so I don't really notice about my feet but uh, the other day I was walking on sidewalk and I noticed my right foot turned out a little bit uh, and, and I couldn't walk straight uh, so I just kept looking at, kept looking at, trying to walk straight, and I couldn't walk straight because uh, my foot was turning out. Now it wasn't because I was born that way, uh, but because my just the wear and tear on my body, uh, I had gotten out of balance. My uh, frame was out of alignment, and so I came back and uh, Sherry and I prayed, and and we prayed for it, and the Lord um, aligned my frame, oh, yeah. and and. The, my knee, the pain in my knee went away, and the and the pain in my back went away. It was all connected. It was all connected, and, and the Lord healed me. And so since that time, I've been testifying uh, about how the Lord aligned my frame, balanced it, and, and so I could walk straight. There was no problem to walk straight after that. And, and so I've been testifying. And every time I testified about it, it released the power to do it again. Amen. And, and Amen. Several, several people have received yes, healing. Yes, like Judy Bowers. In this last week, just because <laughs> the Lord healed me and I could transfer that. I could I could testify about it because he wanted to do it again. He's no respecter of person. Amen. Uh, he, 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 he shows no partiality. If he's done it for one person, he'll do it uh, Hallelujah, over and over. Perhaps there's someone here tonight. Hallelujah. That has pain uh, in their knee or their, their pain back. or their back. And so I'm just going to ask uh, Sherry, we're going to come in agreement. We'll pray with you. So just Amen. raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Want, that's you and you want to receive your healing. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come and we say that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we know that your healing is within each one of us. And right now we release the power 
to heal and align bodies tonight yes, in Lord. Jesus' yes, name. Lord. Align their frame. <clears throat> strength out, stretch out their arms to even. Stretch out their legs to make it even. Uh, let the pain leave their body yes, right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know he'll do it again. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. Amen. So, so Sherry and I do those verses of Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. Continually. Con continually. Oh, there's one more I want to tell about. <coughs> Hallelujah. Okay. And that is a woman came to me and um, said that she had been diagnosed with a lump uh, in her left lung. And I didn't ask her if I could pray. And she was standing there right there by me. And and I I balled up my fist like this and I hit her in the in the left lung and, and she fell backwards and she <laughs> Paul's laughing at me. I hit her in that that lung and she said, you know, I didn't and she she went back and then when she got back up, she said, you know, I didn't even tell you where the lump was, but that's exactly where the lump was. And she says, I know that you destroyed it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, believe and receive. Hallelujah. Believe and receive. Continually, but this is the way. Hallelujah. This is life. <laughs> this is kingdom strategies. strategies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we renew our mind to the kingdom, and then we go out there and do some incredible things. You you think about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You think about Jesus in uh, Matthew 16 and in, uh, you know, in 15, 16, he's asking about uh, uh, who do people say he is. And then uh, Peter says, oh, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And he said, the father, uh, you, flesh and blood didn't give this to you. you you, the Father revealed this to you. And he said, I'm going to give you the keys, keys to the kingdom. To the kingdom. Hallelujah. No, basically, mm -hmm. those are mm -hmm. the principles that we operate by. The keys of the kingdom. And, and that's why all of us do. And, and uh, verse uh, 19. But then it's in the next breath, uh, Jesus mm -hmm. says something. Mm -hmm. He said, then you're going to have changes. Uh -huh. Well, why do we need the keys to the kingdom? Woo, hallelujah. Because we're going to be facing changes. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you don't hallelujah. need the keys to the kingdom if you're not facing changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you're facing changes and you're facing crises, and the crises that he's talking about is going to be pretty incredible. Let's just listen to what he says. But I want you to know that we need the keys to the kingdom. That's the principles of the kingdom in order to deal with crises, difficult times. And so re read these two verses, Sherry. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. From that time, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem to suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and to be killed and to be raised up on the third day. Whoa. Oh, hallelujah. So Look at these two yeah. verses, how they go together. He said, here are the keys. The oh, kingdom. man, everything's going to be good now. I've got the keys. No, and then what, and he says, crisis is coming. Oh, <laughs> oh, crisis is coming. Your, your leader's going to change. change. There's going to be some changes in leadership mm -hmm. here and how things are mm -hmm. done here because I'm going to be killed, and, and I'm, uh, and I, but I'm going to be raised up the third day. And so we're looking here. It's only with the keys of the kingdom that can you can face crises and make decisions mm. that will be effective in the good times and the, and bad, the bad times. times. Oh, let me say that again. In the good, good times, times and, and the, the bad, bad times. times. You need to be able to make decisions that will, that will be effective. Hallelujah. See, a lot of people can make decisions in the good time when things are just going smoothly. Oh, you can keep on doing the same thing and making decisions, but, but in the tough time, yeah. that's what a crisis is. That, that It's intense trouble. Mm -hmm. And you have to come up with a new strategy Ooh, that you haven't had hallelujah. before in the good times. Because when the bad times come, 
when trouble comes, you're, you're going to have to come up with a new strategy, strategy because even your leader may not be around mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. All the leaders are, see, he didn't say my people perish because they don't have a leader. He said, my, my people, people perish, perish because mm, they don't no, have a vision. Mm, so mm. catch hold of a vision. Uh, catch hold of a vision because the leader uh, may be here one day and may not be here the next day. That's right. My spiritual father. I, I, I thought he... He was a young man. I thought he'd just be around mm -hmm. forever, but boy, he passed away uh, 23 years ago a at an early age. The devil killed him. The devil took him out. Uh, the devil took him out. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't just put all of your trust in the mm -hmm. leader because things are going to change. Catch hold of the vision and run with the vision. Amen. See, run with Amen. the vision. Amen. Write the vision down. Run with it so others can run with it. Yes. Catch the vision. Amen. It's not the visionary that's going to keep you from being uh, from perishing. It's the vision. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. So get the hallelujah. vision. Get it down. Write it out. Run with the vision. Amen. That's the important Amen. thing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to go to John 16, 13, because there's a, a phrase here I really want to pick up. Okay. okay. But when the truth giving spirit comes. What, what translation? John 16, 13, the passion okay. translation. <clears throat> but when the truth giving spirit comes, he will unveil the reality of every truth within you. Okay, that's the phrase I want to focus on mm -hmm, here. He's mm -hmm. going to unveil. 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 Right, well, go ahead and read the okay. phrase again. Let's look at it. He will unveil the reality of every truth within you. Okay. This is the point mm -hmm. that God is transforming you into the image it's... of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So he has put some things in you. He is in, he's invested things in you. He's put purpose and destiny in you. And, and it's not going to come out in the good times you're going to have to face some mm -hmm, bad times mm -hmm. some trouble times and, and then you make the decisions from a kingdom mindset and come up with a kingdom strategy and so you're bringing forth that creativity that is within you, you there you have a person within you that hasn't yet been surfaced it's the hidden man of uh -huh. the heart it has to be brought forth and, and it's not going to be brought forth just facing good times because you're just going to keep doing the same old thing in the good times. But when crises come, that's the time uh, to make some creative yep. decisions. I mean, Bring I mean. forth the creativity within you. Okay, go ahead and read this whole verse of the end. Okay. He won't speak on his <clears throat> own, but only what he hears from the Father. And he will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. Mm, hallelujah. So he's going to show you some things to come, and you need to know. See, yeah, in, in the crisis and yeah. the bad times, you need to know before it gets here. <laughs> don't don't be caught unaware. Mm -hmm. you, you have enough of a close up enough a relationship with the Holy Spirit that He will show you what is coming. But in the bad times, see, you're going to have to pull out, draw out what has already been put in you, and that has to be revealed. That hidden man of the heart has to come forth because mm -hmm. that is going to be transforming you into the image of Jesus Christ. If we, just, if we just rock along in the good times and just stay in there and never make any decisions, never make any hard decisions. Uh, see, we just keep going around and around and around. It's when we rely on the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. We're trusting Amen. in the Lord to show us the future, show us what is to come, help us make the hard decisions, the important decisions, the life and death kinds of decisions that we make. And we have to do those. And then that's when we're being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And it goes back to the uh, where I started with that uh, Zechariah. Uh, that that mm -hmm. uh, passage in Zechariah that all of the enemies that were coming against the kingdom, God raised up four creative people. Oh, oh hallelujah. 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 And that's what he's doing in you. When, when all mm -hmm. hell is breaking mm -hmm. out against mm -hmm. you 
He's going to raise up the creativity that he's already placed within you. Hallelujah. And he's going to bring it forth. And you'll be able to make kingdom decisions for kingdom strategies that will carry you through the hard times. Thank you for being here tonight. Mm, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want to just say uh, a, a couple of things about the creativity that's within each one of us. The Lord spoke to me today and he said, if something's not there, create it. Now listen to that. If something's not there, create it. Create the job that you want. Create the finances that you need. Create the healing in your body. Create from within you. The relationships we need. Hallelujah. The relationships you need. Create the peace that needs to be in your family. Create. And, uh, and, and I thank the Lord for that. Uh, there's there's some situations that that I've needed some kingdom strategies uh, to to deal with these situations. And one is the sale of my dad's house in Big Spring, Texas, and he wants it sold, and it 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 it's on his mind constantly. And and so we have we have done lots of different things. And but then the Holy Spirit, that's when the Holy Spirit spoke to me because I was praying this morning and when I got up and and I said, Lord, you know, what do you want me to do? What else can we do to get this house sold? And he said to me, when it's not there, create it. And I said, OK, he said, create a buyer. Hallelujah. Create a buyer. Hallelujah. And so that's exactly what I did. I spoke it out of my mouth. That's how we bring forth what's in our heart. And, the, and we speak it out of our mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And I created that buyer. And so I am giving the Lord praise this night that that house is sold Amen. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. See, the carnal mind cannot create something. Right. It's hostile to God. That's right. But only that kingdom mindset developing kingdom strategies. And, and I believe that we can look at the, the word of God and we can gain uh, wonderful knowledge from reading the word. But it says, be a, do not be a hearer only, but be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. And, and what does it mean by being the doer of the word? We don't go back and do what Jesus did because that, that's, that was what he did. And no one else has to do anything in that area. But what we do is we create with the words of our mouth, the situations that are around us. So you can create your environment. And I know some of you, um, you know, can um, go into a, a different place, a restaurant, a business, uh, a doctor's office or a dentist office, and you can, you know that there's been, um, uh, anger there, there's been jealousy there, there's been arguing there, or you can have the reverse. You can feel the peace of God uh, when you walk in. Well, all of that was created with words. Both the good and the bad was created with your words. And so when you're developing kingdom strategies, ask the Lord for the words to speak that will create the kingdom strategy that you need. And, and he will do it. He is faithful uh, to do it. You know, in these two messages, what the Lord gave us was shalom. To prosper, to be at peace, and to be in health. Yeah. Those three, those three areas. And, and so we speak shalom to you tonight. I'm going to open up the floor. 
uh, for comments and uh, the movement of the Spirit, uh, whatever the Lord is telling you to, to bring forth, then uh, just bring it forth in the name of Jesus. So, who's going to be first? Let's get this, this moving. Okay. Be first. I'll be first. Okay, Judy. Um, Brother Fred was talking about his foot turning to the right. And I shared with him the other day that um, my foot had been turning to the right because I was buying new walking shoes and I happened to be walking in front of a podiatrist who is my <laughs> friend's husband with us. And he said, your foot is going to the right. I said, oh, it always does. <laughs> and I had been having really bad pain in, in my right upper leg as we've been walking. Uh, his wife and I have been walking. And so when I got home, I just realized that God had straightened my foot. <laughs> <laughs> he straightened my foot. And now it's not going to the right anymore. It's you know it's just not it's 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 okay and i don't have that pain anymore but i do have a little um praise report saturday we had a wonderful day and we got home and toward dinner i wasn't my all of a sudden my stomach didn't feel exactly right and then i realized my throat didn't feel right and um, so i put my hand up to and felt this right gland and it felt like a rock Oh dear. It literally, it literally felt like a rock. And what came out of me was, oh no. <laughs> and you know, in the past that would have been, oh no, I'm scared. You know, but I felt like it was more authority. Oh, Hallelujah. And about a minute later, I felt there and it was gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was gone. It was gone. And it had to come back. <laughs> glory hallelujah glory thank you lord thank glory you, lord. yes amen amen thank hallelujah. you jesus thank hallelujah. you jesus hallelujah who else has something they want to share sherry as you were sharing right there toward the end you know the there's so much power in in the word that words that we speak to other people that's right, Eddie. We can we we can either speak blessings or we can speak curses. We can change a situation by being positive and speaking blessings on people. Uh, you know, Amen. you can change a person's uh, outlook on life just by uh, just saying you really look good today. How how are you doing? <laughs> just encouraging people. Amen. 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 And. So there's there's so much power in, in what comes out of our mouths. That big old long word of reciprocity, you know, when we sowing and reaping is Yes, <laughs> we amen. Sow, we sow goodness and mercy and kindness and love. That's exactly the kinds of things that we can expect to get back out of it. Yeah, absolutely correct. Absolutely. And I will add, he uses that on me constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I'll kind of be a little bit off, I'll say. And he'll just come in and just put his arms around me and just say all these good things. And it <laughs> totally changes things. So <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's a lot to do with your attitude. Yes. So, That's right. He, that, that he, that he's great at that. He no, really hallelujah. 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 Well, he has a kingdom mindset. And so what comes out? What you put in is what's going to come out. Hallelujah. You put in kingdom, kingdom's going to come out. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody else? Um, I was going to say something that the Lord, uh, I don't remember it often enough, but years ago, he told me that he goes, I don't make bad days. <laughs> so regardless of what change is going on he's not making a bad day right, you know right. this is a day that the lord has made we yes. will rejoice in it we rejoice in the day that he has made not yeah. what the enemy is making not what 
our coworkers are making, not what whatever is making, uh, that we rejoice in the day that he has made. Hallelujah. And I believe that as we do that, that we, like you're talking about creating, that we are releasing the day that he has made. Oh, um, it's good. good. Into good. Into the day instead of whatever else is trying to go on. Um, and he changes not. Yes. Now, we have yes. change here, yes, but he changes not. So yes. uh, we yes. just believe for him to continue to make those good days. Amen. 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 <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hallelujah. Somebody else. Rebecca? Well, I just want to thank the Lord uh, that he is always on the scene. He's on the scene in the good. He's on the scene when there's a challenge. And, and we can know for sure, just as you hear your child's cry, and you know that cry, and you are right there when you hear that cry, the Lord recognizes the cry of his kids. And I'm telling you right now, he hears those crying out to him, and he shows up. He is right on the scene in the yes. midst of whatever you're going through. There were four men in a fiery furnace, but he was in there with them. And, <laughs> and Daniel Amen. was in a lion's den, but, but God was in there with yes. him and shut Amen. those lions' mouths. Hallelujah. So situation we have, we, we know that we are like Elijah. This is a group of Elijahs. And what Elijahs do is they don't look through the perception, as Brother Fred has pointed out so clearly. They don't look through the perception of the world. They don't look at things through the eyes eyes of the world and what the world sees and how the world perceives. No, they look at things like Elijah did. And he said, guess what? All this mess looks like it's going one way, but God has already decided another. Hallelujah! And you can try what you want to do over there, false prophets, and you can cut yourself and do whatever else you want to do, but there's going to be a prophet showdown, and we are right in the middle of it. And, it, and it, the Elijah's of the spirit of God, Hallelujah! the devil and his cronies, but God says, I've got some fire, and that fire Hallelujah. is going to come down, and it's going to burn up every single lie, and when it's all said and done, Elijah says, well, I just see my God, I Amen. See my God. and I see his hand like a man's hand, I see Hallelujah. a of victory, I see Hallelujah. my God's hand raised out in victory for mm -hmm. me. It, hallelujah hallelujah what i see in the prophetic in this group right here is that whatever your situation is you see god on the scene with you and amen he is, amen he is with you and you're coming through this and what is he going to do he's in that crisis to say i'm here i make the changes and i say you win <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah Beautiful. Woo! Powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is a group of leaders that will make a difference. And the Spirit of the Lord says, This day I say unto you, Listen, and you shall hear my voice. I will come forth like a mighty wind. I will come forth and I will blow and I will speak. And I will do what the enemy thinks that I cannot do. For I say unto you, my kingdom is within you. I say unto you that my power I put in you. I say unto you, I have put my authority in you. Now speak and change the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 